So I've made some changes to my gold wing this week that I want to share with you. I made one change to make it even more comfortable and a few changes that make it even more visible out on the road. Doesn't matter if you own a gold wing or not, most of these updates in some form can be applied to your own motorcycle no matter what you ride. Hey, my name's Kevin and I release a weekly video on MC Rider focused on road skills or road strategy to help make you a better rider. Hit that subscribe button and that bell icon to get notified of all new videos or head over to mcrider.com and you can watch every video ever released on MC Rider. So let me start by saying that I'm not being endorsed by any of the products that I'm going to talk about today. These were all paid for with my own money and this is just my honest opinion on these products and I'm offering them here to you to maybe help you make some good decisions for yourself. When it comes to motorcycles, I'm much more concerned about function over form. A motorcycle has to be comfortable and geared towards my style of riding for me to be interested in it. If it doesn't match the function I want from a motorcycle, I don't care what it looks like. A perfect example of that would be the Ducati Panigale, one of the most beautiful motorcycles in my opinion, but I don't fold like a pretzel like I used to to ride it, and I have no need to go 80 miles per hour in first gear. So as much as I like the looks of it, I'll just look at the pictures of it rather than ever owning one. My Goldwing was as close to being fully functional off the showroom as any motorcycle I've ever owned. The only thing that really bothered me about the Goldwing in function was the seat. When I initially purchased the motorcycle, I was good for about an hour of riding before the seat started to bother me. And as some of you remember, I took it to Wingsoft and had the seat reworked. Now that did make some improvements for me. I would say that it bumped my comfort factor up to about three hours. So I gained about two hours of riding time before I'd start feeling the seat. But this is a touring motorcycle and you should be able to ride it for longer than three hours in a day in comfort. So I decided to dress the seat again and this time I'd bite the bullet and get the seat modification that is most recommended by long distance riders. Now, I've known about this company for some time and I've looked at getting a Russell Cycle product seat in the past but I've never actually pulled the trigger on it. They have a seat that they call the day long that they build using your seat pan from your own motorcycle. The Daylong seat is definitely a case of function first over form. But with that said, I think it looks really good on the motorcycle as well. The way it works is you send them some photos of you seated on the motorcycle, feet up on the center stand, or if you don't have a center stand, someone holding it up for you. And with your feet down and with the passenger, if you're planning on getting the rear seat done as well. They get you into the production waiting list and when the time comes for your order, you send them your seat and they custom build a seat from your existing seat pan using the photos and your request as a guide. In the order, you can ask to sit up a little higher, a little forward, maybe a little bit back depending on how they can accommodate you and within some degree they can accommodate most requests. Now I was on the waiting list for about two months and once they shipped the seat, it took about two and a half weeks to get it back. But what I got back was night and day more comfortable than what I shipped out. So here's some photos, before and after photos of the seat that you can compare for yourself. New seat also includes their own backrest, which is also very comfortable. And this was the most economical option that they've got. This is covered in vinyl as opposed to the leather. Vinyl is actually more durable and probably more water resistant than the leather is. So I opted to go for that and in addition it costs less. So I've always said that a motorcycle seat, the more it looks like an old tractor seat, the more comfortable it will be. In order to be really comfortable, it has to provide some support for the sides of your backside and not put all the pressure on your tailbone. This seat does that job really well. You can see from the photos how much more support it provides over the stock seat for the edges of your backside. So it's not putting all the weight just right up the center 
all that pressure right up the center of your seating position. The only negative I have to say about this seat is it will limit your reach to the ground slightly at a stop. It's not a real big deal if you lean slightly forward when putting your foot down or rise slightly up out of that seating cup and forward to get both feet down. So prior to sending the seat in, I could flat foot the gold wing with the stock seat and now I'm getting the balls of my feet on the ground. But if you stop and only put your left foot down like I do, it has even less impact on stopping and being able to get your foot down. At this point, the seat's not fully broken in, but I have been out for a little over an hour ride, and this is by far the best motorcycle seat I've owned. The only other seat that can compare to this is that police-style seat that was on my Road King. It was a fantastic seat as well, and it had many of the same characteristics that Russell builds into their day-long seat. Now, Russell works with about any motorcycle seat, and they have a lot of photos that you can see what the seat will look like on your motorcycle. So if you're not happy with the seat on your motorcycle, I can highly recommend Russell Daylong seat, and I'll have a link to their site down in the description of this video. So since it was going to be about two and a half weeks to get the seat back from Russell, and I couldn't ride it during that time, I decided to add a few more goodies to the Goldwing while I had easy access to the battery and the electronics of the motorcycle. First thing I did was I added the Honda OEM USB charger for the left saddlebag so I could charge cameras and other gear while I'm out on the road. Also I added a headlight modulator from a company called Kisan and this was perhaps the easiest install of them all. You literally unplug the wiring harness from the existing headlight of your motorcycle and plug this in line with the existing wiring. When it's installed and only during the day, it causes the high beams to pulse or modulate, making your motorcycle much more visible to oncoming traffic. If you turn the high beams off, it shuts off, and at night it shuts off as it detects there's not enough ambient light to run the modulator. I've had modulators in the past on my FJR that I used to have, and it's, in my opinion, one of the best safety features that you can do to make yourself more visible on the road. It's legal in all 50 U.S. states, but if you're outside the U.S., check your local laws before installing this. I'd guess that someone makes a modulator that'll work with just about any motorcycle out on the road. You may have to do some Google searches to find something that will work with your setup but it really makes a huge difference and it's noticeable when you're out that people pay more attention to you and it really appears that it's much easier for them to see you as you're approaching. So while I was playing around with the lighting to the front of the gold wing, I also found these LED vent lights that blend perfectly into the existing lines of the gold wing. So they offer some additional daytime running and additional turn signals to the front of the motorcycle and they all add to that light presence of the Goldwing as it's coming down the road to oncoming traffic. Now these lights are from a company called Twin Art. They were also fairly easy to install, especially if you purchase the Gold Strike wiring harness that goes under the seat. The wiring harness is just plug and play with the existing wiring on the Goldwing. And if you're not a Goldwing rider, just do some research on Google and for what's available for your motorcycle. I'm sure that most of you have options that are specifically made for your motorcycle or something that'll be a universal fit, whether it's from this company or somebody else. So with that completed to add lighting to the front of the motorcycle, I decided to help the back of the motorcycle as well. I have the OEM luggage rack on the rear trunk of the Goldwing for some time, well, since I got it. And I added another plug and play item from Kisan that turns the rear trunk light into a running light and it modulates that brake light when the brakes are applied. Now this makes the motorcycle not only more visible when riding down the road, but more attention getting when the brakes are applied. So it modulates for a few seconds and then it just turns solid after a little bit. So Kisan makes modulators for several different motorcycles. I have a link to them in the description as well for products, this product and other products that they offer so you can check and see what's available for your motorcycle as well. 
But while we're discussing motorcycle lighting, let's talk for a few minutes about my thoughts on the subject. Now remember, I'm a function over form kind of guy, so when I add lighting to a motorcycle, it's for the function of the light that I'm most concerned about, not the aesthetics. So I want to be seen coming down the road. I'm not as concerned about lights flashing or being you know, visibly pretty on the motorcycle. Because there are a lot of kits that you can add to lights to your motorcycle, all colors of LED lights to your motorcycle. You can light up the wheel well, the front and back of the wheel well. You can show off the engine with blinking flashing lights and a multitude of colors. And if you want, you can look like your own mini Mardi Gras parade rolling down the road. Now, if that's your thing, go for it. But for me, I'm interested in the function over the form and I don't want people throwing beads at me when I pass by them on the road. So my strategy when adding lights to a motorcycle is to address the visibility on the road and to address the front end of the motorcycle first. The front end of the motorcycle is the most important area for visibility. Most motorcycle crashes happen in the direction of travel and that's why a headlight modulator can be such a great accessory to have installed on your motorcycle. It's relatively inexpensive and in most cases very easy to install and adds the most value for the dollar to make yourself more visible on the road. Beyond that modulator, adding some extra lights with a gap between them makes the motorcycle much more visible as well. So what I mean with some gap between them is adding just a brighter headlight will help make you more visible but if you can add extra lights with some separation between it so you got your headlight you add more lights with some separation between it that's going to make you even more visible to oncoming traffic because it increases the overall light presence of the motorcycle and helps you be more visible on the road so after the front of the motorcycle is addressed with additional lighting if you want to add more brake lights or modulators to the rear of the motorcycle, that will help too. But there are far fewer incidents of motorcycles being rear-ended, and those crashes tend to be less lethal than crashes to the front of the motorcycle. So in my opinion, address the front first and then the rear of the motorcycle if you're wanting to make changes to the lighting of your motorcycle. So I hope this video will help you make some decisions about addressing some of your visibility on the road. And as always, leave a comment with some things that you've added to your bike that you felt like have helped. Or join us on the forums where we'll be continuing this discussion. And you can learn about forum access and getting access to the field guide at mtrider.com support. Until next week, guys, this is Kevin with MT Rider, and I'll see you on the road.